Tonight, the five most shocking moments in the Jody Arias trial. The jury has heard some sexually explicit stuff straight from the victim, Travis, thanks to that phone call, that sex phone call recorded less than a month before uh, Jody kills him. Let's listen to the fifth most shocking moment of the trial. By the way, call me. I want to hear what you think are the most shocking moments. We've got to warn you, the language is very graphic. What do you know that it sounds like? Sounds like it was 12 year old girl having her first workout. <laughs> It's so hot. Uh, going to your arms around the tree, blindfold you, and uh, put the camera on the time while I'm Oh, just a minute. It goes so hot. It's so good. You went just where I needed it. Just went where I just, I just needed it back. You, you me so right. Jody claims Travis was the one who asked her to record their kinky role-playing sex tape, but the prosecutor says no way. Jody is lying. She recorded it secretly. Number four is when Jody claims she walked in on Travis masturbating to a photo of a little boy, accusing him of pedophilia. The prosecutor says this is completely made up. It's a lie. It's a fiction designed by a pathological liar who wants to get off on murder. Listen to this. I walked in and Travis was on the bed masturbating. It was a picture of a little boy, five-ish, five-six. I'm not a good judge of age. It, I felt nauseated. I ran inside and threw up in the bathroom. There's pictures of you laying on the bed in pigtails. Pigtails? Yes. I've got pictures of you that I've blown up and you've got the little mole right there. It's the same one. It's you, it's obvious. The third most shocking moment of this trial, those photos, they were uh, sexually graphic photos. Um, and I gotta say, this was one of the most sexually charged trials in history, especially one broadcast. The graphic fantasies that were discussed during testimony and the phone tape, they amount to the number two most shocking moment of this case. Check this out. He wanted to get out of the car have me come out of the house, give him oral sex, and he wanted to on my face and then get back in his car and drive away without saying a single word. Uh, you know, nearly every day Jody's on the stand, there was some testimony of a very sexual nature. And now for the most shocking moment in the Jody Arias trial, at least according to me, when Jody actually got up and took the stand. Here's one of her greatest hits, if you might call it that. We were struggling and wrestling, and he's a wrestler. He's grabbing at my clothes, and I got up, and he's just screaming angry. After I broke away from him, he's, he said, kill you. Of course, the prosecutor says that's all made up, but one thing we can all agree on, this was one very rare case when a defendant in a high-profile trial took the stand. Uh, Michael Jackson didn't do it. O.J. Simpson didn't do it. Casey Anthony didn't do it. Jody Arias took the stand, and she talked for 18 days. So first, I want to go to Celine Darkle Stanion. What was it like? Because I remember I went, oh, my God, she's taking the stand. What was it like to be in that room when all of a sudden she gets up and they call her and she takes a stand? I, I will never forget it. Nermi, her defense attorney, got up and said, we'd like to call the defendant. And the entire courtroom went silent. Everybody was looking towards her as she slowly got up, and it was our first time seeing this, walking towards the stand and taking that stand and listening to her tell us about her childhood. And remember, Jane, we went through her entire life story, and I think the, the best moment was when uh, Juan Martinez got up there and started cross-examining Jody Arias. Yes, it was absolutely extraordinary. And these trials are one of the few, few places where we get to peer into somebody's life and see things that they don't tell their psychiatrist, their doctor, their best friend, their spouse. Trials really pull back the curtain.